Hello guys, you're welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we are going to be doing something very, very interesting. I'm going to be showing you a very big hack that you can use to do your frequency separation and still achieve amazing results, just like you are seeing on this screen. And the beautiful part of it is that it's not all that technical, it's just for with the use of your brush tool and you will still get the same amazing result. And you and we are what we are doing is frequency separation. It's not something extremely difficult. You, you just like you just like it. Okay, so without wasting your time, let's quickly get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to take care of the blemishes so that it wouldn't affect our image at the end of this. So to take care of that, just going to quickly create a black and white adjustment layer over here. And of course, tone it down, increase yellows just slightly so we can see the blemishes then right here i'm going to create an empty layer pick up my my healing brush tool pick up my healing brush tool and make sure that your layer is set to current and below do not use all layers if you use all layers it will also be sampling from black from black and white just do current and below and once you do that make sure you are using a soft brush yeah make sure you're using a soft brush and zoom in a little to start affecting, to start taking care of your blemishes. So quickly, I'm going to do that. Hold your alternate to sample from a particular area and then clean it from the area you want to clean. So I'll hold my alternate, sample it, and now take it away from here quickly, just like that. All right, so we are back. Okay, so I'm done with the blemish removal. Let me show you exactly what I did. Okay, so this was the image before, after, before, after. So if you notice, we did quite a lot of job on the face. So I, I didn't want to do more than that because it started affecting the shape and the textures of our face. But this is cool. So I'm going to match all of this together while we get straight into our frequency separation. So to do that, I'm just going to of course, I believe by now you understand the concept of frequency separation. It's just separating your colors from your texture so you can be able to work on your texture without affecting your color. Simple. So to do that, I'm going to press Ctrl J two times. I'm going to call this color. I'm going to call this color. I'm going to call this texture. Sorry, I was on texture. Okay. So to do that, I think I did a mistake. All right, so I'm going to have to close the text on here, focus on my color. Then one thing you need to do is to convert this color to a smart object. Or rather, don't convert it yet. We'll see through that the letter in the video that was way too step ahead of myself. So I'm going to go to filter, go to blur, go to cushion blur, zoom in the image. So what you are doing right here is to determine the how many texture or the amount of texture you still want to retain in this image when you are done. So I'm going to zoom in to see exactly the amount of texture I'm losing. So I'm going to stick to four. It's a very good place to stay for this image. Let's see what seven gives us. Seven is also a good place to stay. Okay, so let's stay somewhere in the middle five. I'll press OK. Then I'm going to open up my texture layer. So what I did right now was I separated my color from my texture so right now i'm going to separate my texture from my color so i'm going to go to image go to apply image make sure you are selecting your color just maintain the same setting you are seeing on my screen this should be your subtract make sure your scale is a 1 to 8 offset your scale is in 2 rather offset 1 to 8 and every other setting should remain the same press ok change the blend mode to linear light beautiful so put both of them into the same group ctrl g so when you do this and you do before and after and you see any change on your image, it means you miss your setting. 
So at the end of the day, after making this setting, you shouldn't see any single effect on this particular image where you do before and after. Reason is because everything that is contained in this group is contained in the background. So it shouldn't affect your image in any way. So having done that, the next step is to change your your color. Make sure you only you convert it to a smart object. When you convert to a smart object, now you go back to your Gaussian blur. This is the catch. Go back to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, then zoom in on the image to see exactly what you are doing. So you will blur the image out until you have it as smooth as you want it to be. So I'm going to start with somewhere around 15. Let's see how that goes. 15 is good. Uh, let's see what 20 gives us. Okay, so I'm going to use 20. I'll press OK at 20. Now change. Go to your smart filter. Press Ctrl I to invert your smart filter. I'll pick up your brush on your smart filter. Start painting over your image. And you will just start introducing that and blow you did right into your image right like this just like that amazing see the way it's affecting the image the very subtle manner and we are still having a very beautiful result so all right so we are done it's up yeah okay so let me show you the before and after so this is before this is after this is before this is after let me zoom in so you can see it so this is before this is after before after so if you feel probably that it's too much or it's too it's too low you can go back into your version below right here and either increase it let's put it somewhere around extreme maybe 30 so you can see exactly how much it's affecting our image yeah like that so you can decide to do 30 can even decide to do 15 if you feel it's too much but i think 30 was a very beautiful one so i'm going to stick somewhere around 28 sorry that was bad 28 yeah okay this is nice so i'm going to press okay so let's check before and after before after before after before after a very very amazing result okay so quickly i want to show you how you can clean up this teeth because i'm noticing that teeth has a lot of yellowish in it so just go straight into your your and saturation you can use your hand too to pick the yellows but i'll just go straight to yellow slider and reduce the saturation press ctrl i to invert the selection and paint it like this so we automatically get a white stitch so if you feel you still want it a bit more whiter you can increase your lightness like this gives you a more cleaner uh white stick like that it's beautiful just take care of things. Yeah. So I'm going to do a very quick dodging and burning to it. I'm going to do a very quick dodging and burning. I'm just going to go to my curves. Take up my highlight. Take it up a little. Press Ctrl I. Create another curves. Take it down a little. That. Yeah. So I'm going to call this my burn. Call this my dodge. So pick up my brush tool. Make sure your flow is very low, maybe like one, two, between one, two, and three. So I'm going to do three and just paint it over my highlights, just like that. Just to make the highlights pop a little more, just like that. I'm not doing something very intensive. Yeah. So I might as well close my frequency separation to see where the highlights are falling. Just like that. It should have small highlights here, it's over here. Little here, touch of it over here, touch of it over here, just over the eye. Oh, you know the eyebrow rather, but the nose somewhere around here. Just a very quick one. So over the lips, I'm going to decrease the flow a little just to make that one a bit more intense. Yeah. Cast our highlights here. Nice. So do the same thing for your bone. Part three. So, bond is simply making your dark places darker. I was going to do that. I was going to quickly darken this area. Quickly darken this area. Quickly darken this area. Can here. Just like that. 
شيء السفر اوكي والله يا تسنتين انتسي just lightly darkening some areas that you know that needs to have shadow just for the dimension of the image yeah this area same thing this area same thing so i'm going to do it just in very quick round shaped bone over the whole face just like that to bring it all together Okay, once I'm done, I'm going to turn back my frequency separation. So I'm going to group these two dodging and burning. Let's see what we'll have. So this is before dodging and burning, before, after, before, after, before, after. See the way we've been able to pull in dimension into the image just by doing that subtle dodging and burning. So I think I have too much burn on this one. Okay, so I dodge with touch here, it's too long. Yeah. All right. Okay, so. Of course, we're going to drop the opacity of the whole dodging and burning. So drop it somewhere around 16. Yeah. We'll have the four after very subtle effect. So our hue and saturation and our frequency separation. So this is the overall before and after. This was the image when we came into Photoshop. After removing our blemishes, this was the image after doing our frequency separation just by using brush. I believe you learned a lot in this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video and one more thing i forgot to do before i go is color grading so we're going to run a very quick color grading on the image just to bring the skin tone together and all of that okay so quickly go into your gradient map go to load my photographic toning so go to your legacy gradient go to photographic toning so just pick any warm skin tone you can find there so I think this is going to give a very nice effect. Let's start with that. I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light or any other blend mode that allows me get the skin tone that I want. But let's see what color gives. Yeah. Okay. So let's try soft light first. Okay. So I'm going to use my color range to see if we can do that skin tone separation, but that wouldn't work. So to get that done, I'm going to duplicate this select subject, select subject and wait for it. All right, so press Ctrl J to separate your image from your background. So we'll have it here. Create a mask for it. Go to your color range right now. So now you can pick the skin tone at least. All you'll be getting is just the dress, which is the same thing with the skin tone color. So that would be a problem. So this is our skin tone right here. Press OK. Place the mask. Now you can delete the object layer. And now open up your gradient, your gradient map. Now we'll have it on the image. Copy your brush to paint it into the places that you didn't enter. And if you do not want it on the dress, of course, you can remove it from the dress if you do not want it on the dress. So I'm going to just keep it there and reduce the opacity. Let's see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, then we obviously are going to be painting it out of the dress. It's... All right. So I think we are good with the skin. So let me reduce the opacity, maybe like that something. Let's see what we we'll have. Well, after, I think we need it a little more lower. All right. So this is before, this is after. Very rich skin tone. Yeah. So let's see if there's any other blend mode that will give us something better. I think I love what this is doing. Let's see. Okay. Uh, that was it entirely good. I'm still going to take it up. Let's go a little bit more. See what color has. Just move through your blend modes to see exactly the one that gives you the effect that you are looking for. I love how warm this is. All right. So I think I, lo I love what the vivid light is doing. So I'm going to pick up my brush and now reduce the opacity. The way it's warming up the whole skin and all of that. Beautiful. So this is before, this is after. Let's zoom out before, after, before, after. Let's try one more color lookup table on it. I see how nice that we look. Okay. It's not bad. All right. So I think I'm going to stick with this. Duplicate your mask by holding your alternate and drag it. Then reduce the opacity to maybe like 
eight or something. Yeah, before and after, just to cool the skin tone down, because I noticed it was quite too bright. Okay, so this is before and after. I'm going to group this together. So this was the image before we started the color grading. This was after the color grading, before the color grading, after the color grading. One more thing I'm going to do is to darken down the background just slightly to make sure that the image is properly separated from the background. So I'm going to select subject like I'm doing already and select inverse, duplicate my background layer, breast layer, via cut, and now pick up my mat, my course and clip it to my background just like that and now reduce the brightness. Yeah. Just to make sure that my image is out of the background, make it stand out. So this was before, this was after. Now we have her pushing out of the background without the background competing with the image originally. This is too much. Yeah, beautiful. So this is the overall before and after. I'm going to quickly take a snapshot so we can be able to quickly do that. All right, so this is the before. This is the image when we came into Photoshop. This was after the retouching. This was before we came into Photoshop. This was after the retouching. All just using our brush. Thank you once again. See you on the next one.